Hello, my name is Claire Wachter. A year ago, I launched the Virtual Piano Pedagogue, a three-hour video series that explores the art of the phrase, the essence of Chopin, and the genius of Domenico Scarlatti. I am pleased to present a new series, the Virtual Piano Master Course. I am sure you will be fascinated by the first topic in the series, the secrets of Russian piano tradition. It is my very special pleasure to introduce our guest artist for this video, Dr. Alexander Igorovich Tutanov, who will reveal the secrets of Russian piano playing, or at least some of the secrets. Alexander Tutanov's recollections of his life in Russia are fascinating. As a young man, Alex met the great Dmitry Shostakovich, who praised his talent. His oral skills teacher was none other than Dmitry Kabalevsky. I know you will enjoy Alexander Tutanov's engaging personality, and you will find his vast knowledge of Russian music truly astonishing. Most importantly, you will hear Alexander Tutanov's wonderful piano playing. Mikhail Glinka was the first great Russian composer to gain international recognition. As with all of the Russian composers of his era, Glinka was not trained as a professional musician. There simply was no such thing. Largely self-taught, Glinka was the first to proclaim his Russian identity in words and in music. During his extended stay in Italy in the early 1830s, Glinka met Vincenzo Bellini Gaetano Donizetti and Felix Mendelssohn. Later, however, he wrote in his memoirs, a longing for my own country led me gradually to the idea of writing in the Russian manner. Glinka's operas, A Life for the Tsar, and Ruslan and Ludmila brought him international fame. Franz Liszt wasted no time in recognizing Glinka's genius, paying him the ultimate compliment by arranging for piano the March of Chernomor from Ruslan, only one year after the opera premiered. In 1844, Glinka traveled to Paris. There, he met another promoter of his operas, Hector Berlioz. Glinka also visited Spain in the 1840s. Among his Spanish-inspired compositions is the second Spanish overture for orchestra. Those who know Rhapsody Espanol by Franz Liszt will immediately recognize one of the Spanish popular tunes that Glinka uses. But Glinka was first by more than a decade. One of Glinka's most delightful and engaging orchestral pieces is Kamarinskaya, composed when Glinka was in Warsaw in 1848. It reveals a new orchestral sound. When we listen to this tone poem, we are definitely hearing the first masterful orchestral work with an absolute Russian identity. Glinka died in 1857 at the age of 53 and was buried in Berlin. Glinka's close friend, the prominent Russian astronomer Vasily Engelhardt, arranged the transfer of Glinka's remains back to Mother Russia. How fitting that the planet Mercury has a volcanic crater named for Glinka. One of Glinka's most beautiful pieces is a nocturne for solo piano.
captivating, isn't it? What makes it Russian? What makes it authentic? What makes it special? Hello, and thank you for joining me for this conversation. The topic of it would be secrets of Russian piano playing. The key concept that I wanted to focus on for starters would be the concept of intonatia. The intonatia on the piano is best explained by connecting it to the breath and connecting it to the listening. It's what's happening between each note. We are dealing with four notes in the uh, melody that I just performed for you. And the way you place them, what would the singer do? Most likely, the higher note will be slightly louder. The lowest note would be slightly softer. Louder, softer, softest. It just so happened, incidentally, that it's the last note of the phrase, and the singer would likely be running out of breath. So we're, in effect, trying to help our singer, the one that lives in our fingertips, to achieve the same goal. In performing any music, but particularly Russian music, this is a key concept not to be missed. If there is a melody, and the melody that comes right after this melody, we need and must shift our attention to that other voice, the best way to do it would be to start hearing that melody, that counter melody that gradually becomes the main melody right away, ahead of the time when you actually play the melody. Let me illustrate. comes in discipline in one's ear during the process of working on any piece of music especially written by a Russian composer, in this particular case by Mikhail Glinka, would be essential. We need to pointedly work on developing this attention, this close attention to each note that comes out of our fingertip, even before we touch the actual key. Hear it in your ear, create a sound, the idea of a sound, and try to match it. Of course, while connecting with the breath. Down and down. This would be the secret of intonatia in a nutshell. Even the children that begin piano lessons are asked to sing along with their playing. It develops essential skill of constantly hearing our output. What I've often encountered during my teaching and lecturing in the United States and other countries other than Russia, I see the students, the performers, given up on the note that they just strike. And I would say in Russian, School in Russian tradition, it's the opposite. The life of the note, it begins with the moment of the first strike. We can then trace the amplitude of this tone. On a good piano, it's likely to bloom. And I like the analogy, it blooms like a flower. When we train our ear, melody becomes more alive, more vivid, more expressive, more song-like, which of course, in essence, is our goal 
ultimate goal of every pianist, to convince their audience that they're singing at the piano.